All right, I am here with Coach Kevin Lawman, head coach of Galveston College. Uh, how long have you been a coach here, Coach Lawman? Uh, this is my sixth season here, uh, 28th overall. 28th overall, 28 years as a coach. And I assume some of those you were an assistant coach? Yeah, yeah, I started as assistant coach at Central Oklahoma. Uh, spent three years there. Um, moved to my alma mater, New Mexico Junior College. Was an assistant there for five. Uh, became a head coach at Vernon College for 14 years. And um, moved down here to become the assistant coach uh, six years ago. And I'm now in my second year as head coach. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, have you had any players that you personally coach go to the major league level? Yeah, yeah, I've had some big league guys um, from some of the Vernon teams, had some guys that made it all the way up. Um, that's really what this whole thing is about, is having our guys move on to four-year schools, get their education. Um, some of the fortunate ones get a chance to play professionally. Um, professional baseball is a hard way to make a living. Um, it's a hard, hard job to be good at. Um, but we've had several over the years that have got that opportunity. Yeah, that's uh, super impressive, uh, obviously. And I know that this season has been difficult, and last season as well with the whole COVID pandemic. Uh, do you like to tell me kind of a little bit of how things have changed? Wow, everything has changed. Uh, over the last calendar year, um, almost a year ago now, um, we got shut down, and the world as we know it has changed both from a baseball standpoint and just the way of living has changed. Um, cert, some of the certain protocols that we go through now um, prior to playing a game, uh, there's a lot of paperwork, a lot of protocols, a lot of check boxes to check. Um, I just told one of my players, I was like, I really miss the days where we used to just get up and eat breakfast and go play baseball. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that now. For sure. It, uh, obviously, yeah, you had the checkpoints and we didn't have fans available at some stadiums for a while and Obviously, that's uh, been a big thing for us here is people have to watch from home. They weren't able to come, but uh, definitely for sure. But on a lighter note, I want to ask you, what is your favorite ballpark food? Oh, man. Um, I'm a big Frito pie guy. Frito pie? Um, okay. I spent a lot of time recruiting high school guys, um, concession stands all over the state of Texas. Frito pie is where it's at. <laughs> that's, that's a good choice. I, I like a good hot dog myself. Um, so <laughs> best baseball player you've ever seen in person? Oh, man. Um, I played with a first-rounder in high school. Uh, he had a big league career that was about 12 years long. Um, his name was Shane Andrews. Um, my roommate in junior college was a, uh, was a closer for the Angels when they won the World Series. Um, he's actually coming into town in a couple of weeks, so I'm anxious to see him. Um, you know, this game has given me a lot of opportunities to be around some people that are really special, and uh, thankful for all of that. Yeah, for sure. I know Galveston has uh, put in some good players. You know, obviously Juan Pierre, uh, Keith Folk, uh, he recorded the final out of the World Series in he 2004, did. right? He did. I actually talked to Keith last night. Um, those guys up there on the wall. Uh, we, we've had uh, nine big league guys come through here. Uh, Keith and some of the others have reached out to me over the last year or so and uh, kind of reintroduced themselves to the program, and it's nice to have those guys involved. I think uh, Backy is another one. Yeah, Brandon Backy. He was in a World Series as well, I think. He was. He was. The odds of going to the World Series for any baseball player is low. I mean, you have millions and millions of kids that play Little League ball all the way up to the World Series. You have 50 guys on both teams combined, you know. Right. So that's, that's just really crazy. Uh, I want to play a little trivia game with you. Juan okay. Pierre, you know a little bit about him. I do. How many home runs do you think he hit in his career? Um, I'm going to say 11. 11. Actually, he had 18. And then the other one I wanted to ask you was how many stolen bases do you think he had in his career? Mm, I'm going to say 600. 614. A very good guess. A very good guess. Uh, so I know you you guys have started off uh, a little bit of a tough start to the season, uh, but you guys have a lot of talent on this team. We do. Um, is there anything you want to say about your guys and the, the players you have on this team? Well, you know, it's not just us. It's, it's across the country. Um, everybody's trying to find their way. Um, a lot of these guys, whether they be – the incoming freshmen coming out of high school or our returning guys, um, most of them haven't played in over a year. And, uh, you know, we've had limited fall practices. Um, we've had time restraints due to uh, protocols uh, that, have, that have been a real challenge. Um, 
we're all just trying to find our way and find a rhythm in the season, and it's hard to do. It's hard to do. And then you add this year we have a two-week shutdown because of ice and snow. That just added to the whole thing. Um, but, yeah, uh, we, we have a very talented group. Uh, they're still playing really hard. The The record hasn't been what, what you would want it to be on paper, but I think all those guys out there know how well we've played. Um, it's not – it's not the uh, going out and just getting blown out every time. It's we're losing five to four. We're losing four to three. We're losing, you know, we get a hit right here, we win. If we don't, we don't. And uh, I think our guys are just staying mentally tough through that. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. We still got a lot of baseball left. Oh, for sure. And you guys, like you said, have definitely been in games. Uh, it seems like one of the things that you stressed is you've had situations where you could win a game. You have bases loaded with nobody out in extra innings and, and no run score. And so as a coach, uh, the head coach, how do you feel like you should approach a situation like that? Because that's a frustrating thing, I know. It is It is frustrating, but you have to understand we just have to keep putting them in situations where they, they can succeed. Um, and if the more times they're in those situations, the more comfortable they're going to be. And ultimately, if they stick to the process, things are going to work out. And we have to remember what, what our place in this whole thing is, and that's developing those guys as players and men and students. And I think, uh, I think that's going really well. Okay. Well, one thing I wanted to ask you for sure, you have four players from Canada on your team. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a 37-hour drive to it Canada. It is. To Langley, which is where I think three of your guys are from. Correct. 37-hour drive. How do you convince – three or four guys from Canada to come to the most southern part of the United States and play baseball for you. They like me. They like me. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I like you too, so I get it. I get it. But I'm just it, – it seems – I didn't have to up myself 37 hours to come <laughs> meet you. <laughs> so. That uh, – the, the Langley Blaze relationship, is it's a longstanding one with me. Uh, I probably had my first Blaze kid in 1997 or 8, somewhere around there. And – had, had a lot of success with those guys over the years, um, and now some of my former players are coaching up there. So, you know, it's, it's been a very good relationship between us and specifically the Langley Blaze um, to where every year I get two or three of their best guys, and that's coming from a really good program. They do a great job up there. I mean, some of the players you have in there are very talented yes. players. Uh, Brandon Nickel, yes. uh, Connor Dykstra are very, very talented. I know Kurt Dillon is from a different part. I think he's from Toronto. Correct. But he is a good pitcher for you guys. Correct. Um, so that is – that's impressive. I mean, that some of your better players on the team have come from so far away. Um, I, I – I, I, that was one of the first things I noticed about the team. And it's an easy sell. You know, you, you say, hey, do you want to come play baseball on a tropical island and have good <laughs> weather? Um, very few guys are going to turn that down, especially if you live in the, let's just say, the colder part of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they're looking forward to being down here. So uh, it all kind of works out. And, uh, yeah, thankful to have those guys. Yeah, for sure. They're very talented. One of the other things I noticed, uh, i seen that you're an associate scout. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? I've never heard that term before. Um, basically, I just do my job here, um, and I, I advise the scouting director, uh, my boss, uh, hey, you might want to check out this guy. Um, and, and, again, it, it really just kind of revolves around my job that I do now, um, recruiting high school players, um, watching the opposing teams play that we play. Um, all of those guys are scoutable guys, so that's just kind of, hey, you need to check this guy out if you haven't seen him already. And most of the time, you know, those guys are very thorough and they've seen them. So it's not like I'm digging up something they don't know. Yeah. But it's more so checking in on them. Hey, how's he doing? Is he healthy? All that stuff. So. And currently, I think you work for the Cubs? It's the Yankees. The Yankees, okay. You worked for the Cubs before, right? I have. Okay. Yes. The Cubs are my favorite team. So It was I, a good run. We actually uh, – I was a part of the World Series win. And, uh, that was fun. Okay. As a Cubs fan, I felt very happy about the World Series win. But as to be a part of it, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I you know I is there any players that maybe you helped send that you know maybe or you, you got to been, watch? There's been several over the years. Um, just right offhand, I can't really think of any right offhand. Um, most of the time, again, the scouting industry now is so thorough that I'm not finding anything that everybody else doesn't know. About. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just wanted you to tell me, oh, yeah, I, I sent Javier Baez to the Cubs. I, <laughs> I, I wish I could hang my hat on something. I wanted like to be that. impressive. <laughs> I wish I was that important. 
<laughs> well, I had a blast in this interview. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Appreciate you guys broadcasting. <laughs> and before I leave, I just want to thank you guys for what you do because especially our parents from Canada, the parents that can't get here, they get to watch you guys and tune in, and uh, they, on behalf of them, really appreciate what you guys do. Oh, yeah. We have fun uh, interacting with them. They'll tell me about the Canadian currencies, the loonies and the toonies right, and the, right. the five-cent coins and everything and uh, get some good information about some of your good players, Nickel and Dykstra and things like that. Uh, so we definitely enjoy having them as a part of it and the loyal uh, you know, followers that follow TSRN and Galveston, of course. So. Well, thank you guys for what you do. Go Whitecaps. <laughs> Go Whitecaps. <laughs>